I was well into this. And then Rooster started barking. You just can't control them, man. Rooster's my dog if you're brand new here. Usually when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is I'll, I'll look on the cameras. You know, you can usually find Millie and Telly on there. I can see Waldo and Lily. Waldo was laying on the floor. Lily was in bed. I didn't think anything of it. And I went and made, a, my, made myself a cup of coffee. But I had to go to an appointment today that I could not miss. It had been waiting months for this, and I could not miss it. So when I go to put give them their milk bones in the morning, they usually get a milk bone. So I'm passing them out. Waldo will not get up. Does not want his milk bone. He just sniffed at it. But he didn't even raise his head off, off the floor. And I'm thinking, man, no. Nah, we don't. I don't want this. So I took care of the other dogs. Came in. I sat with Waldo. He wasn't moving. And I just sat there with him. You know, I got on the floor, which is not easy to do. And just sat there with him. And he just laid there, you know, and but he, he wasn't in pain, wasn't acting, you know, he was just acting sleepy, lethargic. So I sat with him probably a good 45 minutes, and I texted my brother. I said, I think Waldo's, Waldo's dying. I mean, he's 13 years old. And honestly, he has not looked looked that great the last few weeks, few months. You can tell the age is catching up with him. And last night, he only ate half of his dinner, and that's it. I've never seen him, never seen that before. So I had to get up. I had to, you know, I didn't know what to do. I had to make this appointment. There was no way to miss it. It wasn't far. And it wouldn't take long, but I had to go. So when I stood up, he sits up, and I bring him. I take one of the one of their bowls and I dip it in their bucket and I get him some water, and he just slurps it down. You know, usually if some a dog is in very bad shape, you're not going to get him to drink. You're not going to get him to eat. But he was drinking, and he drank a bunch. And then he moseys outside. I'm like, well, that's a plus. Comes back in, gets up in Lily's bed, and he eats his milk bone. So I'm thinking, all right, well, we'll make him an appointment. He, he must, something's going on with him, you know, a stomach problem. I don't know. And nothing, you know, he's not showing like he's in any pain or anything. So yeah, I was gone about two hours, and trust me, I was a nervous wreck the whole time. I didn't have a choice in the matter. Or I would have never left. But I was checking in on him with my cameras. I can look on my cameras on my phone. And he's just, I, I, had to, I put the TV in there for him. He's in there laying on the bed looking up at the TV watching his shows. So I get home, and the first place I go is check on him. He's he's in there laying in the bed, you know. He's gotten up a few times and and he's walking fine. Don't know. The real test would be at dinner time. Can he eat? If he's not going to eat, something's really wrong. So I decide I'm going to give him half a can of wet food, and I'm going to put that on one side. Give him a little more than I'd normally give them they, they all split a can but i opened two cans a day and he got a good portion of one can his favorite country stew put that on one side put some dry on the other so he could choose or eat them both so as i grab his bowl to bring in here he starts his normal barking getting excited for dinner i'm like well that's a plus he's getting you know he ain't on the deathbed yet. I put the food down. He scarfs it down. 
A sick dog does not do that. So I don't know what's going on with him. I'll make an appointment. I can't get him in tomorrow because they do spay and neuters, but you know how that boy is. He lies, and he may have learned this from Rooster, I think. I don't know. But he ate every bit of his dinner, and he ate the dry. Rooster was barking at something out the window. Lily ran out. He ran out after. So I've never seen him act like that. So something's got to be wrong. You know, I pressed all over his belly and he, and he was, and trust me, he was acting like he was liking the attention. He didn't have any pains when I was pressing in on his belly or anywhere else. So I don't know what's going on with that boy, but he, like I said, he is 13. I'll tell you on the way to my appointment, I'm like, I'm, you know, I guess I'm going to be prepared, but I don't want to be. That's, I, he's been with me since day one. Since I got to Arkansas, day one, I have never been without that dog. How many thousands of days that is, but he's, you know. I got here September 22nd of 2012. And he showed up the very next day when I woke up. He was already there in the front yard, him and his sister. His sister passed away uh, when she was only six. Had her stomach get twisted, is what the vet said. So, but I not the whole time I'm thinking I'm not if he's not in pain, and it's his time. I'm gonna let him stay here because I I'm up at you know. I have had to put down a lot of dogs in my day, a lot the, with the rescue, a lot of my own. And that euthanasia they use, a lot of times, it does not go well. It did not go well with Lulu. Uh, it didn't go well with Wally. It did go all okay with Libby, uh, but she was healthy. You all know that story. Still, still haunts me today. I can't never shake that. And that's the last thing anybody wants to do is take your dog in and then they're not coming out alive, but he's fine. And I'm going to keep an eye on him. Uh, I don't know. I wish they could talk, but he is getting older. So, you know, but if he's going to go, that's how I want him to go is pain free. And here, here at home, uh, it's never, never good having to take them in. That's the only species Dogs and cats, really, that get put down, you know, other than some other wild animals that might be caught or whatever. Everybody else dies naturally on this planet. And a lot of people, oh, you're letting them suffer. No, I will never let him suffer or any other of my dogs. But uh, where would you rather go in a stranger's place and plus he's terrified he is absolutely terrified of car rides and he is absolutely terrified of going to the vet he's only been a couple times and they've had to muzzle him and i don't want him muzzled and you know but he he's he, he scarfed his food down like it was going out of style his heart he's breathing okay Unless he's learned a new con, I don't know. He had me fooled. I honestly thought I would be burying him today, and that ain't the case. And I thank God that he was watching over him. So if you guys ever had anything like that happen, let me know. And it doesn't mean he's out of the woods. There is a reason he was acting that way. Uh, but he has slowed down. he has slowed down quite a bit. In the last couple months. Yeah, he's lost his hearing. That's been a long time now. But he has slowed down and I've noticed his he's aging. He's aging quickly. I've noticed that. Uh but you know he, in human years he's pretty old. And his breed generally don't live too much longer. Thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for Dogtober. 
uh, video on both channels. Happy trails.